I probably look a little janky. You know what I'm saying? But hey, it's all good. Why is Champion so expensive now? Like, seriously, I know y'all know that Champion is not supposed to be this motherfucking expensive. But I be looking on them websites and they be bugging the fuck out. Like, who's about to pay $80 for a t-shirt or $60 for a shirt like this? I went right to Models here in New York and got this for $19.99. I did buy two of them because for $19.99. And like some other Champion shit. But I'm saying Champion has been a brand since I've been a kid. It's not like an exclusive designer brand, but it's a nice decent you know what i'm saying reputable brand and now you got companies you know showcasing their shit on their websites going ham on the prices like where we do that at but anyway we about to start this real talk okay yeah what's up divas and divos so you guys already know it's real talk wednesday and of course i am somewhere different i am in new york and i've been having a really great time despite the bullshit that my two eldest kids have put me through like the beginning of the week you know what i have noticed that when you have grown kids they act so more they act more immature than your middle age kids or not even middle age but like teenage kids like my 11 year old and my 16 year old them two are so well behaved so responsible and so mature but then when you have those who are 20 and 22 it seems like, do you guys really know how to act while I'm gone? Um, why do you choose this fucking time to act the hell up and start your dumb shit to where, you know, you're doing shit that is just basically out of the ordinary, like, shit that you wouldn't even do if I was standing in your face. Like, seriously? Mm-hmm. Or how about this? They seem to catch their feelings or to get into their feelings. You know what I mean? But <clears throat> when you are in your feelings or not even in your feelings, as we as mature adults and parents, when we tell them how it's really supposed to be in a manner that is stern, they seem like they get more into their feelings. And then that's when you start feeling like, or you're being called the bad guy. At this point in my life, I'm 44 years old. If I'm going to be the bad guy, bitch, I'm going to be the motherfucking villain. Like straight up, if I'm going to be the bad guy, I'm going to be the villain. Because I'm not going to constantly say something to you. I'm not going to do what you expect me to do. I'm not going to do what you want me to fucking do. I'm going to do what I damn well feel is proper, what's right. And also, I'm going to do what I want because I'm grown and this is my home and these are my rules. And if you cannot respect it, then the door is right there. There is one door in the front. There is a door in the back there's the garage exit and if you want you can go out your motherfucking window and leave either way i have said this to them okay on several occasions if you don't fucking like it there's the door and you can take the back porch door you can take the garage through door or you can leave out your motherfucking window either way you don't have to be here and then when you come to that point and you have to serve it to them, you know what I'm saying? You got to serve it to them like that. It's like, oh, she's being mean or, oh, she's being a bad guy or, oh, she doesn't love me. It's shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. So you guys think you could do what the fuck ever or you can say whatever you feel like it. But then when I come at you with some realization, some real shit, I'm the one that's in the wrong. I shouldn't be like that to my kids or to you or you know, either way. So the beginning of my week when I left was not that great. I had to dish out some real shit, like some bullshit with my, my eldest daughter. Like, you know, I'm all the way on the other side of the world right now. And you trying to disrespect me and then bring it to social media. Like, where do we do this at? You know, I had to nip that in the bud. And it's like, listen, I'm a hard worker. I'm a great parent. I'm not saying I'm the best parent in the world because I don't think anybody is. But I feel like this. As much as I do for y'all grown asses, you know what I'm saying? Because I can go above and beyond. Don't ever disrespect me. Ever. I don't give a fuck if it's truth or lies. Don't ever disrespect me. And the majority of the time, it's a bunch of, I'm only going to tell you this side of the story. I'm not going to tell you the rest. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, okay, well, since you want to bring it to the light and you want to bring attention to the shit, let me just tell you the rest of the story, okay? I'm going to even be nice enough to leave out some of your negative bullshit that I could just bring to the light and really play you. But I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to bring out the reason and the source. And it's like, y'all don't get it. But then, you know, when you go and you combat them about some shit, they look at you like you are the motherfucking villain, okay? So I feel like this. If I'm going to be the bad guy, a bitch is going to be a motherfucking villain. And I'm at this point in my life where 
listen, you don't even have to leave if you don't want to. I'm going to put your ass the fuck out. The door is right there. Here is your exit papers and bye-bye, sayonara. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't need no grown-ass kids living in my home. Um, I'm just like over like being stressed out a lot. And I've and I have dealt with enough in my lifetime to where I'm not about to allow anybody to stress me out anymore. You know what I'm saying? I have five children and I'm about to have three grandsons. And I'm not going to allow anybody, I don't give a fuck who it is, stress me the fuck out. Never, 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 never. So, you know, the beginning of my week was not that great. You know, by the time you guys see this, I have will have been here a week. Me and my mom had like an amazing time together. Um, we went to this store in New York, um, Manhattan, um, called Jack's 99 cent store. It's been there since I've been a kid. I'm not really sure how long, but it's been there for a minute and everything in there is definitely not 99 cents, but they definitely have like some really great finds. You know, when we went in, they had like this big display or you know, whatever you call the big, big ass wire cage bins. And it was fur, it was full of, um, faux fur, um, like shawls, I guess that you was want to call them scarves for, they were absolutely beautiful. They had like different textures, different designs, and it was 99 cents. And, you know, my mom makes clothing for American girl dolls, you know? So I was telling her and it wasn't for the dolls. It was for actually, you know, us, they were nice and wide. Like I would have bought some, like, you know, if you have a hood on your jacket and it doesn't come with fur, you could have bought one of those. And like, if you were crafty, you could put it on, but they were nice sizes and shit. And I was telling my mom, Let's get some for the American Girl doll so you can make like fur vest, you know what I mean? And, th and things like that for the doll. So we got those and they had like some, another bin full of panties. Like they were from, I do believe they were like from Kmart, if I'm correct, because they were $10 on a tag, but they were 99 cents. They had a lot of those, though their size larges. Mm, honeys, they didn't, they did not fit like a large. Them shits cut my circulation off one pair of them so bad. Okay. I would have probably caught a yeast infection. So, you know, I would give those to my, my daughters, the um, other ones that I didn't wear and I bought for them. But, um, we had a great time. We didn't really go anywhere like spectacular, but to me, I'm just happy being with my mom. But we did, um, we did go to um, Long Island City because my eldest son, Jerron, who lives in Schenectady, New York, he was in New York City, like, you know, Long Island City, um, at the studio. So he was doing a new song and then he was doing a song feature with this girl. So we got to see him record and shit, which was great. My mom got to see him. You know, I see him often, more often than my mom does. So we got to do that, which was cool. And then we just went to eat. We, we ate out. We went shopping and shit like that. We sat up to like three, four in the morning watching TV. Like, I mean, this is the shit that me and my mom do. And so even if we don't go anywhere, like anywhere, anywhere, I don't even care because it's just time well spent with her. And then, you know, I got on the Greyhound bus and then I got, I came to upstate Albany, New York. You know, I went to the Albany airport, picked up my rental car, you know, and now I am upstate New York. So I am well rested. I do have on a new wig that I have recorded, but I have not put the video up yet, but I definitely will because this is from Eon Hair and I absolutely love this lace front. It's not a 360. It's just a lace front, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do believe it's just a lace front. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, it has so much density. 200, to, is it 200 or 180? I can't remember, but it's beautiful. Like it has some weight to it. And my baby hairs are not pasted down. They're just a bunch of wispy hairs, you know, see a bunch of wispy hairs and shit like that. Though I got to fix my fucking eyelash because I hate when the inner corner comes undone. That'd be for another time. So you guys, we're just going to get into this real talk video. You guys already know the spew. If you have a real talk video that you would like to discuss, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. And in the subject line, you can put um, real talk. And uh, if you want to change the names of the people that you're talking about, gossiping about, you know, gossiping dirty and about or yourself, you can always say, you know, that you change the names. But if you don't, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm definitely going to say, you know, I've changed the names and whatever, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, baby zaddies, 99.9% .9 of the time. And if you guys are wondering why I haven't been uploading videos every single day, it's because I just needed a break. Like, you know, I'm not going to stress myself out to edit a video every single day if I don't get to it and I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to stay up till like two, three in the morning trying to edit a video.
and post it and it gets barely any views. So I just feel like, you know, if I can get it up, I can get it up. But I definitely will make sure that I get my Wednesday videos up and at least three videos a week, you know. And that's about that. So, you guys, make sure you check out my latest video. Um, well, it's not my latest, but I did post a video on Saturday, which is my wig storage video for all of you guys who wanted to see how my wig storage is. I definitely have a video posted for that already. And, like, my latest half wig video also is posted, I think that was, like, on Thursday of last week. And then I do have one that I posted on Tuesday, which is by OMG Her Hair. So, yeah, you guys, it's not been an everyday consistent thing. I don't really think you guys need videos from me every single day. Like, you know, it'll give you time to catch up on the other ones, you know, which I think it allows me to get other things done. So, on that note... Let's just get into this real talk. Oh, God. Huh? 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 What? Damn. 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 Alright, you guys. So, let's get into this. Hey, April. I'll try my best to keep this short and sweet. I'm changing my name to Tori. I've been with my man, let's call him Chris, for over a decade. We have three kids together. We both work and we both went back to college together. We are in our 30s and he acts like a damn horny teenager. Constantly, sl constantly slapping my ass and always trying to have sex with me every chance he gets. Most of the time, with all of the demand of being a mom, full-time employee and full-time student, I'm just not in the mood. But there's more to it than that. Diva, my body has gone through a lot of changes in the last few years. I gained some extra weight after my last child, and my confidence has really taken a hit because of it. And I'm just not in the mood most of the time. I feel like I've lost my sexy. My man tells me that he loves me with my extra thickness, and that's all that should matter. What he doesn't understand is that I was used to being more toned and athletic than I am now. So being thick feels very uncomfortable for me. How I feel about my body is a very personal thing for me. I'm currently working on dropping a few pounds so that I can feel better about myself for me. April, am I wrong for not giving him as much sex as he wants? Well, first of all, Tori, you guys, you know, y'all get y'all been together for over a decade, so that's a good thing. Y'all got three kids. Y'all in your thirties. They they done did a lot of shit together. They done went back to school together, you know what I'm saying? Which is cool. I like that, you know, educated family, you know, keep the education that's really important. And that's able you to teach your children, your three kids are more values in life. You know what I'm saying? But here's the issue with Tori. She feel like her man is over sex drive, basically because he he's slapping her on his her ass. You know he's trying to have sex with her every chance he get. She just feel like he's a you know like a horny teenager in the, in their thirties. Let me tell you something, honey. First of all, I'm in my forties and my husband is still the same way. He does the same thing, you know. And I'm so used to it now. And but I have that same issue as you have. I got five kids, so with my last one with Mumsy. <clears throat> girl a girl had gained so much weight like seriously to the point where you ever feel like you know your man will tell you that he loves you he loves you the way you are and this is what i always get from my husband like you know i feel so self-conscious about my body that i would actually when we would be together like you know before this time but you know when we was living together in new york i would i would feel so self-conscious about my mid area like my belly area that i would always suck it in i would hold it in you know when we was naked just because i felt self-conscious and he's always telling me you know i love you for who you are i love you you are a woman this is what women's body is supposed to look like and resemble after they have children and regardless of what not everybody is supposed to look this way and look that way some men don't get a kick or get a get a urge or get a feel off of women that are plastic okay so and i've learned this from my own husband this is what he tells me you know like i have tried to improve lots of things on my body like my weight my stomach and i have went to the length of to the extreme of you know making appointments to get a butt lift like i don't really need one but i would like one or my boobs done you know tummy tuck i have done things to that extreme i haven't gone through with them but i have done those things to the extreme of getting consultation and you know it's hard being a woman because the parts that we see and we feel like that are not perfect not everybody feels the same way as we do. Like, what I see on me is my pouch, and I don't like it, meaning my stomach. 
my husband doesn't look at it like that. You know what I'm saying? And he says the same thing. I love you with all your thickness. And also explains to me that there are more men in this world that prefer a more natural looking woman versus a woman that's plastic. Okay. A lot of men love women that have stretch marks a little cellulite and dimples because they know that this is all natural and this is a real woman and this is what a real woman is supposed to look like. And I'm not knocking nobody that's got plastic surgery, no fake titties or fake ass. I'm not knocking anybody who, you know, because like I've told you guys plenty of times before, if I could, I definitely would. All right. But a lot of things that stop me from doing that is just because I have these conversations with my husband and he makes me feel a lot more confident about myself. Now, I don't have this issue as much as I used to, meaning I don't feel like self-conscious about how my stomach may look to him when we're naked. I feel, or I'm naked, you know what I'm saying? Because he could be sitting there watching TV while I'm coming out the shower getting dressed. And I don't feel like I have to suck in my stomach. I just be who I am and that's who I am. And I feel a whole lot more confident. And you know, it, it's hard when you're a woman and you feel these things and you think like the whole world is looking at you in that manner. And I think a lot of it has to do with social media. As we see these women, you know, on Instagram or on TV, they got these perfect bodies. And in reality, they're not really perfect bodies because you have done enough to pay for them. So, of course, you've made them perfect. But are they going to be like this for the long term, the long haul, the fake titties, the fake asses, the fake hips? No, they're not. You're going to have to upkeep on them. Same thing you got to upkeep on your own natural body, but it's a lot more, a lot cheaper. You know, but I, I don't, I don't knock anybody who's got any type of work done because, honey, if it makes you feel good, then go for it. But just keep in mind that, you know what I'm saying, if you have a man that's telling you he loves you for your thickness and everything else and y'all got kids together, sweetheart, I'm pretty sure he means that sincerely, you know. But if you have a issue with your own body, then that's something that you have to take up with yourself. You can't knock him because you are what he's you are what turns him on. You know what I'm saying? Like you like, oh, he's he acts like a horny teenager. Here's the thing. If he wasn't slapping you on the ass and he wasn't trying to fill you up and he wasn't trying to have sex with you, and you would feel some type of way about that. You know what I'm saying? I know I would. If you if it were me and I'm used to my husband always constantly smacking me on my ass or rubbing on it, what she does, you know what I'm saying, or trying to have sex with me all the time, you know, and this is what he does all the time, but then he stops doing that, I'm gonna feel some type of way, like either you don't find me attractive or you fucking with somebody else. Okay, that's how we start to think. So it's like one minute we we happy with this, and then one minute we not happy with this. But I don't like him doing this too much to me. And I don't like him always trying to feel up on me and slap me on my ass. But if he don't do it, it's like, whoa, wait a minute, where's it going? What what happened? I do apologize for the lighting because it's very dark out today. It's dreary, you know. This is upstate New York, and it's been raining for the past few days, so there really ain't no sun. But you know what I'm saying. If he don't do that shit, you're going to speculate shit. But if he do that shit, you're going to feel some type of way. Like, why is he always doing this? Listen, just because he's feeling on you and he's rubbing on you and he's affectionate to you, doesn't mean that he's horny. He's a horny teenager. It's what you have done for him that has got him feeling this type of way. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, I'm not, if I am a little bit too horny... Uh, you are you are sitting around me. You are what turns me on. You know, being with a person that you really, really love, you say over a decade, mine is over two decades, okay? We've been together over 20 years, all right? Despite the fact that I have divorced my husband and been away from him for like four years, we still was the fuck together and I still care for him. He was still on my mind. We still would talk. We just wasn't physically together, but you know what I'm saying? We still would talk. We've been together for over 20 years, okay? And when he tells me how beautiful I am to him and he describes what a real woman is supposed to look like and how he feels how a woman should look and how he has had debates with other grown ass men on how a real woman should look, you know what I'm saying? It brings, it, it brings a calming to my mind because in the back of my head, I'm feeling self-conscious about myself and I'm feeling this way about my own self only because this is what I see and this is how I feel. And I get that. And you know, what better way to do or better 
to do for myself is to work on it. And you guys have seen, you have seen the weight loss in me. You know what I'm saying? You have seen the body change in me. Like I, I still like working on my weight and it has nothing to do with my husband because like I said, I'm confident around him and I feel good about myself. But I do this shit for myself only because I know that if I was at a certain weight that I'm not supposed to be, it wouldn't be easy for me to walk up the steps. My feet would start swelling. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't feel happy. So I do this for me, for my health, and just because I want to be happy. Not saying that I'm not happy because I am. I am. I just There are just some things that I have to work on. You know what I'm saying? But that part... Um, the horny men, the horny teenager part, my mom used to say, acting like a horny young boy, you know what I'm saying? Um, that part, slapping your ass, that's just his affection, sweetheart. And he wanting to have sex with you, that's just his affection and his closeness to you. And that's how you make him feel. You can't knock him for feeling some type of sexual urge when you're around him because y'all got three kids. And sweetheart, you must be doing something right because, sweetie, he's still getting turned the fuck on. The problem when you, you worry about the nigga not getting turned on and not trying to do all of that, that's when you motherfucking worry. And until then, you don't got nothing to worry about. But I can understand you tired. You know what I'm saying? You're a little bit tired from going to school, from going to work, and being a mother. Life shit gets you tired. And you might not want to have sex every single night, you know, but men... He probably do the same shit. He go to school. He go to work. He take care of the kids just as well as you do. You know what I'm saying? You can't say that you're a full-time mommy because you may be a full-time mommy, but you also have to include him in it because y'all live together and y'all take care of these kids together and y'all do the same exact thing. So y'all are both full-time parents. So he carries the weight just as much as you carry the weight. However, his stamina, his energy may be a little bit more potent than yours to where, listen, girl, you looking mighty good. Ooh, all that thickness back there and whatever he's feeling some type of way you know what i'm saying he loves you and but i get it when you're really tired you don't want to embrace in sexual activities i get that i totally can get that i have been that way not been that way but i have had those issues many times you know what i'm saying i've been tired or how about this it'd be like three four in the morning Please don't roll over on me and try to start poking me with your shit. Like, I'm tired, okay? I'm tired. I have to tell mine. I'm tired. Back off, you know? So it's not just you, sweetheart. We all get like that where it's like, dude, you just was asleep. It's like 4.30 in the morning. How the fuck do you wake up and want to start doing it? Like, a bitch like me would be like, I'm tired. I'm, can we brush our teeth first? Or, you know what I'm saying? Vice versa. Um... I'm, that's just me. I'm just saying. That's how I would feel. Like, I need a little break. I, didn't I just give you some, like, last night before you went to sleep? And that, listen, these are the things that they love. These are the things that they are, like, affectionate with, meaning you. You are the thing that he loves. And don't feel as if he's a horny young boy. You know what I'm saying? He's just turned on by you. And that's a good thing, okay? It's a good thing. But as far as being tired, it's very understandable. It's very understandable. But here's the thing. My opinion, it don't matter if I shoot my husband's hand away from rubbing on my ass, okay? Or saying um, explicit words to me, you know, when I'm tired. I just deal with it. <laughs> or, or sometimes I do say shit. But I know that just that, I know that that is his his lovable side to me and a lot of times people do have a different way of showing affection some men show affection by slapping their girl on the ass that's just their way of showing affection um you know i do it to my husband but he just be like hey so i don't do that to him and i'm pretty sure your man wouldn't like that either but that is just his way of showing affection to you and it's also his way of letting you know like i see you you're sexy you are appealing to me nothing wrong with that and sometimes you know by a slap or just a stare he may get a little bit turned on he may try to get up in them pants every chance he gets and that every chance he gets might not be an everyday thing but he trying to share a moment with you and i get that but of course there are moments that you yourself may want to relax and just put your feet back and chill. I get that. I have moments like that. Not that I'm getting any, but when I'm home in Arizona, I have so many moments where I would like to just sit back and put my feet up and watch TV and do nothing. But I never get the chance to do it because I'm so busy working. When I come here to New York, I'm able to do that. 
I can sit back and watch TV and chill. And I don't really care about making no wigs. Well, I ain't got no wigs to make because I'm not bringing hair with me. But I will edit a video, but I would edit a video to where it's like I'm up to 3 in the morning. You know? So, I get those moments. I, I, get, I get tired. I get exhausted. And it's the part where I just want to lay down and go to sleep. You know? What you need to tell your husband or your man, whatever you guys are, to one another, is that, you know, in a, in a way that you guys can relate to each other. That, you know, I've had a very long day, honey. I'm so tired. I really want to make love to you. I don't know if that's what you call it. You know what I'm saying? You could be, I really want to fuck. I don't know. But I really want to make love to you, but I'm so tired. Like, I'm seriously really, really tired. I just want to relax and go to sleep. How much you want to bet he will definitely understand you. And he might come sit next to you on that couch or lay up in that bed with you and watch TV and fall asleep. That's all you got to say. To someone like him, I think that he would understand it, especially because he has explained to you that he loves you with all your thickness. Now, I'm not really sure how deep in debt y'all get in conversation when it comes to your weight, but diva, you can definitely let him know, like, you know, it's been a long day, I'm exhausted, I would want to have sex, but can we just cuddle tonight and watch a little bit of TV? Sometimes that's all they fucking need. You know, sometimes men don't know how to say it like that to where they want to just relax and just chill and just cuddle and watch TV with you. And they may feel like you may want something different. I bet you if you was to converse with him and communicate with him a little bit better, he would definitely understand where you're coming from because he too is probably tired. Don't just feel like you're the only tired one. This nigga may just be as tired as you, but he don't know how to express himself to you to let you know, like, listen, can we just chill and relax? I bet you if you, you know what I'm saying, bring up the subject and invite him to relax with you and watch some TV, I bet you he would take on your fucking request and sit back and chill with you. But the weight thing... The weight thing, sweetheart, losing weight is not an easy thing, so don't be kicking yourself down about it. Don't don't feel like, you know what I'm saying, oh, I'm big, I'm fat, I'm thick. Don't think like that about yourself. I know how you feel because, you know, I have been there not just once, but several times. Like, my daughter is 11 years old now, and after I had Mumsy, I weighed like 240 pounds. <laughs> Let me tell y'all, that's a lot of weight from somebody that went from like 150, 160. I was like probably like 165 when I got pregnant. And I, I gained a lot of fucking weight. I never had been in the 200s until I had my fifth kid. And it took me a lot of time and work to get that off. Like, I didn't go to the gym until my husband came home. And you guys know have known me for so long that, you know, he was in prison, okay, when, you know, and after he came home, and I had my fifth baby. I didn't work out until he went to the gym. So he was my motivation and he helped me lose the weight. And I lost, I did lose a lot of weight, you know. But then I moved, um, not just right after, but you know, years have went by. And I moved to Arizona. And I was thin when I moved to Arizona. I wasn't like super duper thin, like crackhead thin. I probably was wearing like a size 10, 11, you know, 12, something like that. Like a 10. And I went all the way up to a size 16, 18. Okay, so a bitch was big, all right? Not big, but for me, it w it's big because now you can see I got a neck. You guys used to, t I used to tell you guys all the time, I had no neck, I don't got no neck. My face is, is, is smaller, and you can tell that because it's a lot sunken in. This is like my, my weight. I weigh like 185 now. You know, I have been working on this weight for almost a year, okay? Almost a year, and I started off at two. 24 to 25 and I I'm gonna say only I'm only 185 because you know my weight fluctuates one minute I go up one minute I go down when I come to New York you know it's like oh, okay fuck the vacation I mean fuck the eating good eating I'm gonna just eat whatever because a lot of people like my mom she doesn't cook so I just eat fast food with her I will go out you know my husband he doesn't really cook like that as much so we'll go out or I'll make stuff or you know it's not the same from being in your own home to you know someone else's so I just kind of like put that on the side. I don't put it on the side as much. I do still watch it. But, you know, my weight fluctuates. And I'm really, to be honest, I really don't feel like I'm at my goal weight. Like, I'm not trying to be crackhead skinny. I don't want to be skinny. I just want to lose my stomach. All right. I want to lose my pouch. But I have already found the reasons of why 
my stomach area is a little bit harder for me to lose and it's not going to go completely flat like I would like it to until I am able to have my hysterectomy you know um, I do go back on the 25th of this month to have an ultrasound again um, I do have two big they're like this size um, fibroids um, in my stomach or whatever you want to call it on my uterus I have one on my bladder like in my uterus so it's a little bit harder when you have fibroids to lose weight I never knew that you know it's it's strange when someone could come tell you that something is this big inside of you and you don't feel it like you know what I'm saying I, I can only feel like pain and I don't feel like anything that doesn't supposed to be there but either here nor there you know I am understanding to weight loss and weight loss is not a joke it's a very hard thing sometimes you do have motivational issues and sometimes you feel like is this not even going to work why is this not working for me I don't understand why I'm not losing the weight what the hell you know I go through those moments but I will say this that I have lost a lot and it may not be as much as I want it to be but I have lost a lot to wear bitch you need some new clothes okay or you know you you went down a few sides so I went from a 16 18 um, to now I could wear like a size 12 or 14 I would say 14 comfortably you know what I'm saying I wear a size 14 um, and I'm fine with that I am five well Tati kept telling me I was 5'3". She kept saying I was 5'3". But no, I wait, I am 5'5". Five five. I put the longest I was saying I was 5'3 because of some type of measurements that we was at Home Depot. But the doctor did freaking give me a height measurement and the DMV. And I am 5'5". Five five. Okay. It ain't tall, but it ain't, I ain't that motherfucking short. But, you know, I, I, I weigh 185. And I would like to at least get to 175, but shit, I'll take 182 over this bitch, okay? But listen, like I was saying, you have to lose the weight for you. Definitely. Don't do it for him. Do it for you just like you stated. You want to do it for you. And that'll make you feel better about yourself. It ain't nothing like feeling good about yourself. You know what I'm saying? Somebody can tell you all day till you blew in the face that, hey, you know what I'm saying? You look good. I love you and all your thickness, et cetera, et cetera. But when you feel confident in your own self and you know that you're feeling good and you're looking good, then that's what matters. And you know what I'm saying? Then the shit that he can tell you, that'll mean even more to you. But, sweetheart, take it as this. You just something, you just someone that is he is turned on by, okay? Don't feel no type of way. You know what I'm saying? Don't feel like he's horny. You know what I'm saying? You guys have a chemistry. And, hey, let me tell you something. Some motherfucking people don't even have a chemistry with one another. They don't even know how to speak with one another. They don't even know how to communicate with one another. Some men don't even tell their women that they look good and how pretty they are or anything like that. Some don't compliment them. Some don't even like their thickness. You know what I'm saying? And there can be a lot of men like that. There are a lot of men who like the plastic look or the fake look. And then there are those who love the all natural keeping it real look. So be grateful that you do have that because if you didn't and he wasn't complimenting you, sweetheart, Trust and believe you will feel some type of way. So when you tie it, just let him know. You know what I'm saying? He may feel the same type of way. Girl, y'all be sitting back watching some flicks on TV and fall asleep. Sometimes that's all you need is an initiative. You take the initiative and let him know, then he good. And y'all can just sit back and relax. That's all. It's just that simple. So, you guys, you can go ahead and give your advice down below for Tori. Let her know what y'all would do in this situation. Do y'all feel like y'all have weight issues? Do y'all feel insecure about your bodies? Is your man a horny young boy who always want to rub up on your ass and try to get sex from you sexually? How does it make you feel? You know what I'm saying? Does he always want to have sex with you every chance he gets? You know, let her know how you guys feel about it, if that is what's bothering you, or how you would approach the situation, or what you think about the whole situation. Me, personally, listen, if you don't compliment me and you stop complimenting me and stop saying shit I know I would feel some type of way point blank so let's get on to the next story okay so this one is about to be real long this is the last of the day hey April you can call me Lisa 
I'm so over my cousin Tina, straight like that. My grandmother passed away back in January of cancer, and my cousin has just been showing her true self since her passing. Backstory, my grandmother was a strong woman, a retired nurse of 36 years, so she was always taking care of people. I can't even imagine going through the things that she had to go through in life and still having sanity. She lost a daughter 19 years old and a son at 25 years old. Tina's father, my cousin, who I'm too through with, to sickle cell anemia, and then my grandfather to diabetes. Also, drug and also drugs and alcoholism runs deep on my father's side of my family. My dad and Tina's dad had a really hard time with this. My dad has mental issues now due to a running with some bad drugs. Yet and still, my grandmother always took care of him. Before Tina's father passed away, he, um, he and my grandmother went and got my cousin from her mother's family. My grandmother got custody and raised Tina. It's four of us grandchildren, my brother, my sister, and I. Then Tina is the youngest. My grandmother loved all of us. We all had our own individual relationship with her. My brother and cousin were the problem grandkids, so to speak. My grandmother did a lot for my brother while he was in jail as far as sending money and being a mentor to him. My cousin, she was more of the spoiled brat, doing whatever she wanted and being reckless because she knew my grandmother would be there to bail her out financially. My sister kind of lived in her own bubble so she didn't have a very close relationship with my grandmother. But she called from time to time. Then there is me. Me and my grandmother had a close bond. I'm the more headstrong motherly grandkid of the group. She would say I got it from her. I stopped coming around as often as I used to. I was in my feelings about some of the things my grandmother would say. There is no need in getting into that now that she is gone. It really wasn't that serious. But despite that, when I did go visit, my grandmother and I generally did enjoy our time together. My grandmother was diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer July of last year. It shocked us all. The doctors gave her three months to live. My grandmother still wanted to know her options. She wanted to try chemo, so that's what she did. My sister and I took my grandmother to her chemo appointments. My sister even came down from another state to do this. Tina, my cousin, she took her to one appointment. Needless to say, the chemistry didn't, the chemo didn't do anything for my grandmother. The cancer was aggressive and it was spreading. My grandmother wanted to be home for the remainder of her life, so hospice was set up. This was hard. I watched the weight fall off my grandmother when she had been full figure most of her life, when she was strong enough to go out. I remember trying to comb her hair and it would just fall out so easily. I would do the best I could and put it in a small bun. Then the pain. She was always in pain. I eventually just took off work to help and be with her. I felt alone. My sister is in another state. My brother didn't have transportation. My father just continued to do his own thing. But I expected that. Tina was in town and had transportation. She would only come one or two mornings or when my grandmother was about to go to sleep for the night. I just did what I had to do until the end. Every day I will come to take care of her. I dreaded finding her unresponsive. God looked out for me, though. They ended up putting my grandmother in a hospice facility on a Thursday night. Grandma passed away that following Tuesday. She was 83. My sister made the funeral arrangements. Grandma's favorite color was purple. I ordered her a beautiful purple dress suit to be laid to rest in. The funeral home did an amazing job. The hair, look, her hair looked exactly as she always had it. They filled her face out. She was gorgeous. My grandmother didn't have much. She had the usual essentials, a car, house, and a savings account. Life insurance was available, but it wasn't enough. She still, We still had to tap into her savings to open and close the ground. We also needed to pay for the headstone. She did let us know she wanted the house and the car in me and my father's name. She never said what she wanted us to do with the money. I knew my grandmother had a will. She had told me about it a long time ago, but... Grandma never said where it was or anything about it as her health continued to decline. She just made it clear to us that she wanted my dad to be taken care of. During this process, Tina, my cousin, basically feels like we, my sister and I, are against her. Tina wanted us to split all the money because in her eyes, if we didn't split the money, if something happened to my father, we would get everything. We tried to get her to understand that there really wouldn't be anything to split. Grandma's left behind debt, um, debt had to be paid. My father had money. My grandmother was holding in what? My father had money. My grandmother was holding in her name for him. So the money she thought she was seeing wasn't all grandma's. However, grandma left her five thousand dollars, which is for my cousin Tina. At the time, being the person I am, I agreed to let Tina have the car that my grandmother had left behind, which was supposed to be for me and my dad. It only had a four thousand dollar left payment on the car. Tina's current car was in my grandmother's name. She had the opportunity to turn in that car because she didn't want to make the payments. 
I started noticing how full of shit Tina was. She wasn't satisfied with only getting $5,000. Then after I told her she could have the car, she still wanted me to keep it in my name. Then she wanted my dad to pay the $4,000 left on my grandmother's car that we gave her. She got mad when I told her that wasn't happening. Her behavior just didn't sit right with me. She even went as far as to try and bring my brother in it, saying he should be included. I guess so she wouldn't feel alone in being the greedy family member. When in actuality, my brother has been silent the whole time. He is a felon in the worst shape in life than any of us and has not asked for a dime. She was definitely reaching. Then Tina finds the will in grandma's car when she cleans it out. It basically said that the estate will be divided in half. Half the house, cars, and all grandma's possessions will be Tina's and my dad's. My brother, sister, and I will get $1,000 before the estate is split. This definitely changed the game completely, but my sister and I didn't sweat any of it. As long as my dad got his savings that my grandmother had in her name and he was able to stay in that house, we were good. Tina was still with the shenanigans. Like I said before, she had the opportunity to turn in the car she didn't want to pay for, but she kept it. Since now it's hers, we let her know she would be the sole owner of the cars because my dad was going to relinquish his rights to them. Then life hit her real hard. Karma, so to speak. Tina was never responsible, always going through life, not worrying about a thing because grandma always had her back. I saw the letters coming to the house about the car notes not being paid. When I asked Tina had she followed up with the lawyers on that, she said they told me that they were handling that. I just left it alone. Then she calls me one night at work, upset because they repoed the car she didn't want to pay for. She didn't update the lawyers on that because they sent an email out asking had we decided to sell the car. Shaking my head. Grandma's debt outweighs her savings, so that's not good news as far as money goes. The taxes on the house recently came. I immediately sent in an email to ask the lawyers what needs to be done. He said that it was now the beneficiary's responsibility. I forwarded Tina and my sister that email. My sister and I both reached out to Tina and explained to her that she needed to pay her half of the taxes on the house. We will pay her, we will pay her half, but when she gets the money, she needs to pay us back. Tina says she doesn't live in the house, so she shouldn't have to pay it. My sister let her know if she continues to not pay her half of the taxes on the house, she will take the house and just put it in her name. The house is old. In the state that we live in, the taxes are based on the value of the house. Tina's half is $217. Tina expressed that she doesn't have the money. She's having a hard time paying for the car. How is she going to pay her half of the taxes when she just asked my dad for some money? We have more money than her. Why can't my dad just pay for it? She can't ask us for help with her child. The lawyer said that there wouldn't be any money as she doesn't understand why. Also, that me and my sister ain't shit and so on and so on. Mind you, Tina gets government assistance as far as housing and food. She also works two jobs. Excuses, excuses. Mind you, that is what she wanted. That is what she wanted. She wanted to make sure she got hers. Now she doesn't want the responsibilities that come with it. She wants it all to be put on my dad or someone else for that matter. She even went as far as to say things that grandma told her. For example, we only started to come around when grandma got sick and only when we wanted something. Not true at all. Even when my grandmother would offer me gas money for taking her somewhere, I refused it. The things that she's accusing of us are the things that she's guilty of. I'm just over her and her lies and greedy attitude. What is your advice on this? She knew my grandmother's last wishes and it was for my dad to be okay. But in her mind, it's all about her. My grandmother would not have wanted things to be this messy. This all has been a punch to the gut, physically, emotionally, and mentally. What would you even say to this bitch? So, Lisa is pretty damn pissed because her cousin Tina is acting like a money-hungry, greedy bitch after their grandmother passed away. However, Tina, the cousin, didn't really come around and help the grandmother when she was in, you know, hospice or in a hospital, you know, because she died of full-blown pancreatic cancer. You know, the chemo didn't work. It just, it just progressed and spread really quick. So, Tina wasn't coming around helping her like the rest of the family, like Lisa and Lisa's sister, we're going to call Lisa's sister Diamond. But, and Lisa's brother, you know, he didn't have transportation, so he wasn't really helping out at all. And basically he was a felon. He was trying to get his shit together. So I guess that's his, in his best interest. But Lisa and Diamond, the two sisters, they were doing the most for the grandmother. Even though Diamond did not live in the area, Lisa was doing the majority of everything. And Tina would only come around maybe once or twice 
during the week and it would always be during the time frame when grandma was about to fall asleep for the evening which really didn't help out much because you're not really doing much you're not even sharing your time with the grandmother as she is you know in her ailment plus grandma always seemed to do a lot of shit for tina the most you know even though tina was the problem kid she was getting the most handouts the most you know just the most things done from the grandmother and now that grandma has passed away she has left certain things to um tina and not as much to lisa but to lisa's father lisa and diamond's father you know she has left the savings and half the house and such which is good you know just helping him out here's my thing first of all i hate when Family members want to come around when someone has passed away looking for dividends. You know, I don't like shit like that at all. Um, I can't stand. That just shows me and that just screams right there. Greed. Like, you didn't come around to help out and do anything else, but you want to come around for the money. Like, not cool at all. That's just like a real huge turnoff. I had this issue, not even me, but, you know, my grandfather, when I lived in Queens, my grandfather, we lived with my grandfather in the projects. And, you know, we moved to Brooklyn from Queens. And then, you know, we came back to live with my grandfather to Queens. He was only gone for like four years. We lived in Brooklyn for four years. And then we came back to Queens. Now, my grandfather, he was in his 70s, um, not late 70s, but he was probably like 74, 75 when he died. Okay. My grandfather loved playing bingo. And I'll never forget, me and my grandfather was really, really close. My mom at the time you know she just had me living with him and then my little sister we're 12 years apart so my my grandfather did spend time with my little sister but being that i grew up in that house with my grandfather i was his favorite i did have other cousins um from my mom's brother but i lived with him so i was the one who was always around him and my mom always took care of him my mom's brother was an alcoholic and a drug addict so he was homeless he never did anything for my grandfather etc etc he was a bum he never called he never checked on him and when he did call check on him he would use my grandfather but he barely came around you know when we lived in brooklyn my my uncle um did come back to live with my grandfather only because one of my grandfather's friends found my uncle on a street living he was a homeless drunk he had just gotten beat up and he was on drugs so he did live with my grandfather for probably like a year or less and you know he had to be put out and shit like that but either way when we did come back to live with my grandfather you know he loved to play bingo and i never forget he went to play bingo one night and it was pouring rain and um he had a distance to to travel not that far but it was still in queens well he was crossing one of the busy streets it was really late like i would say probably like seven it wasn't really late but it was like about seven but it was in the fall so it was dark out you know what i'm saying and it was raining so it really made it seem like it was later well my grandfather was crossing over to the street just to get to the bingo hall and an oncoming car struck him and kept going like when i say struck him it wasn't like a small strike i'm hit um some drivers they did stop the car because they seen the incident but they hit my grandfather so hard with their car that he flew up and then came back down and my grandfather wasn't a small man he was he was a heavier guy and he was also tall and they left him for dead like it was a hit and run and other people that were driving were able to stop their cars and it wasn't like a really busy street but there were a couple of cars that was around and they seen the incident just from coming on to coming traffic and going the same direction. And they stopped. My grandfather ended up going into the hospital, of course. And he lived for 11 days, okay? He lived for 11 days. He was paralyzed from the neck down. And I was heartbroken because this was like all I had next to my mom. You know what I'm saying? I was really, really heartbroken. We was always together. And my mom and me were the only ones that were always with him. We would always take care of him. And I would go to the hospital every day and so would my mom. My uncle, Randy, who was my mom's brother, I don't even recall him ever coming to fuck around. You know, he did come around when the funeral, you know, at the funeral. But my mom paid for everything at this funeral. She paid for every single thing. And my grandfather, he didn't have a dime to his name, you know. He was um, an older person. He never learned how to read or write, you know back in those days. So, you know, we, we basically, he could read, he could write somewhat, but he couldn't write really well. You know, so my mom paid for everything. He did have jobs and he was always a hardworking man. So he did have money, but it wasn't enough, you know, and my mom ended up having to sue um, New York State 
for the hit and run and she did get you know a settlement i'm not sure how much it was but that was when i was 14 i'm 44 years old now so that was what 30 years ago okay 30 years ago so that money has been long gone all right um but and, and it definitely wasn't like a huge settlement but she received the settlement for his death his wrongful death and them not being able to you know catch the person and um it was said that she is supposed to split it with the other sibling which was my uncle now mind you i don't even think that this is fair because he didn't do a goddamn thing nor you know what I'm saying but you know out of being right and just doing the right thing my mother you know split it with him now like i said i don't know what the settlement was but i do know that my mother did get a nice amount of change um and um my uncle Ramsey, i can't stand him i don't even call him uncle Ramsey. i just can't stand him he's an asshole a fucking drunk drug addict asshole i just never liked him you know how you get your feelings about somebody i just never liked him but anyway Ramsey was living in the projects in brooklyn with some fucking lady named emily that he had met at church okay emily had two kids of her own and these were like you know if i'm 14 at the time these kids are younger than me they're probably like i want to say like maybe like eight and six somewhere i don't remember but they i know they were younger than me you know this is when he want to start coming around saying i want you to meet emily my my wife emily i met her at the church and he want to get these good church vibes you know one of them hypocrites fake ass fake ass church people you know meanwhile the whole time they coming over to my mother's apartment they scheming and scamming you know what i'm saying they got my mom down at housing trying to tell housing how my mother feeds us hot dogs only and how she's this and she's that she shouldn't have this apartment they should give it to my uncle Ramsey and emily like all kinds of shit like you bitch you got a motherfucking apartment in brooklyn why is you acting like this not only that they spent up their share or my uncle Ramsey spent up his share of the settlement by giving money to emily and her kids and just like they just spent it on frivolous shit and then calls my mom up and expects them to give her to give them some of her settlement money like this is the part that i get to i hate when people come around when somebody has passed away because they feel like they can reap the benefits of whatever this person has that's like some greedy shit like some real greed shit like this is not what you're supposed to do when somebody passes away try to get in on their money and they you know what i'm saying like that right there shows you that that person has no real true intentions and all they're thinking about is themselves 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 me personally i don't fuck with people like that and not only that but when someone passes have some fucking respect stop worrying about what the fuck they got in their bank account and what you can get out of the shit worry about your own shit do your own shit get your own motherfucking money as far as your cousin tina and what to tell her i think like you know what i'm saying sometimes you gotta bite your tongue for people and then sometimes it's to the point where you done enough for this girl she wanted this house she wanted this car so she could have two cars she wanted this and she wanted that let her figure the shit out don't get mad when your shit get fucking repo. Don't get mad when you got to pay taxes. However, $217 for taxes. I think taxes is like once a year. I don't know about every state, but $217 ain't shit, okay? If it's every six months, if it's quarterly, that ain't shit to pay on a house that's already paid. So you got the house already paid for, but bitch, you don't want to pay for the taxes. $217 is not shit. But you know what? This is the problem with some of society that they feel like that you are supposed to do everything for them. Bitch, you ask for these things now. Deal with it yourself. However, for the house and your dad lives in the house, I would definitely pay her share of that taxes just so that my father would have somewhere to live. And then I would take her ass to court and let them know she don't want to pay the taxes and she never even wanted to pay the money owed on the car which was repo i would definitely take her to court i would calculate each and everything that i paid for that she was supposed to pay for i would keep my receipts and i would take her to court there's no need to backlash at her and to come at her sideways because of her greed because it's karma and all shit comes to light regardless of what you may think Every fucking thing that you do that ain't right or right will definitely come to light. You ain't got to prove to nobody that you handling business. Just go ahead and take care of what she hasn't taken care of without even fucking contacting her. You know what I'm saying? Keep her the fuck out of it now because you've already went ahead and you've already consulted with her on several different occasions. And she's already let you know and already made you aware that she ain't trying to pay for shit. So therefore, when you ain't trying to pay for nothing, sweetheart, we're going to take these matters into our own hand. Everything that we have paid for and taken care of, we are going to get receipts for that. 
we are going to speak to the lawyer and get emails and, no and letters notarized and given to us. So that way, when you take her ass to small claims court or to any type of court, you have proof. So that way, you don't have to come at her no sideways. It's sometimes best to just bite your tongue and just keep it civil. So that way, that person don't think that you up to something. When you start coming at people some type of way and complaining to them about, oh, they're not paying for this, they're not doing that, they're going to feel like you up to something. Sometimes it's just left alone. You've already tried to help her. You've already told her, listen, you need to do this. You need to do that. She's not trying to do it, sweetheart. That's when you take matters into your own hand and you do it the legal, the legal way. And, you know, just appease her. Oh, yes, we're doing fine. Thanks for asking. Don't come at her sideways. She's going to be real surprised when she hit with that motherfucking letter from court saying, listen, we're taking you to court, not for our money back, but we're taking the house. Your portion of the house, we're taking from you. And if you can get the car back, we're taking that as well. Because these are the things that you were supposed to take care of and you never did. And these are the conversations that we've had with one another. If you have text messages from her that say that she don't want to pay for it, then you keep those. If you have emails from her that say she doesn't want to pay for it, then you keep those. And all these things you present in court. So that way, when your time comes, sweetheart, She's done. You never let somebody know what you're about to do to them, especially when it's going to benefit you. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes shit, secrets is kept, just kept best. When you've already tried, you've already tried to talk to her about it, leave it the fuck alone and do what you need to do for you and your father and your sister and leave her out of it. And if she's trying to involve other family members in it, just, you know what I'm saying? Just cease and desist the shit. Sometimes you got to walk away from shit and may make you feel like you a punk. But I'm trying to tell y'all, maturity is number one key and factor to being an adult, okay? And to get, get done what you need to be fucking done. Straight up. So, you guys, on that note, I got to be out. I got somewhere to be. I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. Um, yes, fresh face, no makeup. Okay, I haven't worn makeup in over a week, which is great. Um, I just really don't feel like doing it like that. Um, I love you guys. Stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the other side. <laughs>